patience is a virtue. It's something that I've had to learn over many years, and I've been told that I have the patience of a saint. It's taught me that good things definitely come to those who wait, and I've applied its many lessons to my many decades of playing video games. From grinding out levels in JRPGs to mastering the perfect time in speedrunning, patience is something that I have honed. But sometimes, you just have to wait. And in the case of the main character in this game, sometimes you have to wait a few hundred years to see your plan come to fruition. Or in my case, 22 years to beat Castlevania 3. Castlevania Lords of Shadow 2 is supposed to be the end for Gabriel Belmont's story. As established in the DLC for the first game in Mirror of Fate, Gabriel has accepted his role as Dracula, the Prince of Darkness. We start with a very gothic setup where Dracula has to defend his castle from a large army from the Brotherhood of Light. After destroying a war titan and killing what looks to be the God Emperor, we then fast forward to the modern era after Zobek talked to Dracula in the first Lords of Shadow game. We then get Dracula's impression of Mumra, a severe beatdown by a lesser demon, and a quite gruesome recovery that leads Dracula to his quest for eternal rest. I really like this intro. It felt epic, it told a good story, and it introduced the controls really well. We don't get tutorials like that anymore. The controls are the same as its predecessor on major consoles, with a few tweaks here and there. To explain the lack of a combat cross, Dracula now has an ethereal whip made of his own blood that acts the same way. The light and shadow magics have been replaced with a void sword and chaos claws, both of which act the same way, yet introduce new mechanics such as projectiles. They also expanded the sub-items Dracula can use, and while most of them seemed kinda pointless, they get their use in much higher difficulties. They also do this wonderful thing where they blend both gothic and modern time periods. The art direction on Lords of Shadow 2 is fantastic, and you get to see the history of the city unfold as you play. While not all the levels are well thought out, it was fun to run around in a city as the Prince of Darkness, and still somehow have it feel right. The big draw, however, is definitely the castle itself. Eventually, Dracula gets led back to his old stomping grounds. Somehow, it's never really explained how it works. But here, Dracula really fits well with his surroundings. There are places that are strangely peculiar, icy cold and extremely hellish, all fitting not with just a castle of evil, but with the personality of Dracula himself. The overall package I got with Lords of Shadow 2 felt excellent. But much like Gabriel's path, there are a lot of mishaps and issues along the way. I have a feeling Mercury Steam had some indecision as to what kind of stuff they wanted to put in, so they took elements from every single game they could think of off of Konami's shelf and shoved it into Lords of Shadow 2. There was a lot of action, some puzzle solving, a bit of RPG elements, and... Stealth. This is coming from a person who somehow beat Metal Gear Solid 4 on normal. This is coming from a person who could not get through The Last of Us without having a minor hysteria attack while playing it. I. Hate. Stealth. It's not that stealth can't be implemented well, but in Lords of Shadow 2's case, it just isn't. Most of the stealth is done in the modern era stages, where you generally have to avoid the Chaos Obliterator ripoffs with not heavy bolters. The only time in the castle where stealth is an issue is when you run into Pan's brother, Agrius. 
Your mileage may vary on this level and in the other stealth areas, but personally, I just couldn't jive with these places. I also wasn't a big fan of the wolf medallion thing that switches you in between the castle and the city. It made it unclear as to what the castle really was. Adding a physical connection in between what seemed like dimensions or time periods is fine, but this was a very sloppy way to connect the two play areas, especially if it's unclear as to how the old castle exists. The story itself also has a few things that aren't completely explained. I mentioned the wolf medallion that's used as a MacGuffin to move you from city to castle and back again. But some things, like the mentioning of Walter Bernhardt, would have been fantastic to explore. These things are only mentioned in passing from the little scrolls and memorials found everywhere. And all it does is add questions where there shouldn't be. Getting back to the last point, Lords of Shadow 2 felt like every aspect of gaming had to fit into this confined space, and while some parts like the combat and exploration worked, others, like the stealth and some of the more obscure mechanics, didn't. So it's a mishmash of things. Some parts worked, and some parts didn't. But is Castlevania Lords of Shadow 2 worth your cash? I'm just gonna come out and say it, it's not a $60 game. Not to me. The amazement I experienced in the first game just isn't here, and although I like a lot of the new concepts, full price isn't the way to go. There are a few things to extend the life of the game, such as the new Game Plus mode, finding all the extras you missed in the original playthrough, and the eventual DLC that'll come out, but right now, it's probably worth between 30 and 40 bucks. Don't get me wrong, I really did like this game, but unfortunately, all the craziness just didn't do it for me. But I am going to have to play this again, just to get all the extras and other stuff that I missed. After all, what other game can you play one of the most recognized villains of all time?